guys, I'm Barbara Dunkelman, and Riot Games has come under fire for stipulating that their Season 4 League of Legends Champion series players are not allowed to stream or otherwise advertise rival games, including Dota 2, StarCraft 2, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, World of Tanks, Smite, or a dozen of others set down by Riot in their contract terms. Riot's director of esports, Waylon Rozelle, has defended the move, saying these guys are professionals contracted to a professional sports league. When they're streaming to 50,000 fans, they're also representing the sport itself. Of course, that doesn't mean they can't play other games, they just can't, you know, tell anyone about it. He goes on to say, pro players are free to play whatever games they want. We're simply asking them to keep in mind that on stream, they're the face of competitive League of Legends. Rozelle believes these restrictions are an important part of turning these elite gamers into true athletes. You probably wouldn't see an NFL player promoting arena football or a Nike-sponsored player wearing Reebok on camera, he says, disregarding the fact that athletes like Bo Jackson have had prominent multi-pro sports careers and the NFL has aired arena football league games. As part of the contract, players are also not allowed to stream gambling sites or promote prescription or illicit drugs, firearms, pornography, or tobacco. Alcohol, though, apparently totally okay. Next up in today's awesome news, Gran Turismo 6 will be the first game in the series to introduce microtransactions for purchasing in-game credits to spend on cars or parts. An update to the UK version of the PlayStation Store has revealed that the denominations of 500,000, 1 million, 2.5 million, or 7 million in-game credits will run you 5 euros, 10 euros, 20 euros, or 50 euros respectively. Prices for these credits in the US Store have not yet been revealed. Microsoft's newest racing sim, Forza 5, has been widely criticized for implementing a similar microtransaction system, which results in the most expensive car in the game costing more than $70 or 50 euros. Sony has been quick to point out that with their economy, 1 million credits would net you a BMW Z4 GT 311, a Ford GT, a Viper GTS, an Acura NSX, a Toyota 86 GT, a Honda S2000, a Chevrolet Corvette Stingray, a Tesla Model S, and a Nissan GT-R. But what about the most expensive car in the game, the Jaguar XJ13? The car costs 20 million credits in the game, which with real money translates to 150 euros. At current exchange rates, that would make it more than $200 in US currency. Suck it, Forza! Oh wait, that's not a good thing, is it? The game releases for PS3 tomorrow, and if they've been paying any attention to what's been happening with the Forza 5 game, you may be able to expect adjustments to the economy, so don't spend your life savings on virtual cards just yet. That would be a cartography. Next up, though fan feedback has certainly been taken into account with these newly released games, Nintendo has revealed that when it comes to deciding which Japanese games to localize for Western markets, fan campaigns don't really factor into it. Nintendo of America president Reggie fils admits they do look at campaigns and they're aware of them, but that they don't necessarily affect the final outcome. The thing we know is that 100,000 signatures doesn't mean 100,000 sales, he says, and ultimately they have to determine whether the games would sell enough to be worth it. He points to Xenoblade as an example. I wanted to bring Xenoblade here. The deal was, how much of a localization effort is it? How many units are we going to sell and are we going to make any money? We were literally having this debate while Operation Rainfall was happening, and we were aware that there was an interest for the game, but we had to make sure that it was a strong financial proposition. Operation Rainfall was a fan campaign to convince Nintendo to localize three games for North America, Xenoblade Chronicles, The Last Story, and Pandora's Tower. All three games were eventually released locally, but the campaign had little to do with it in the end. And lastly, Final Fantasy VIII has finally been released on Steam and contains additions not included in the original Western release, like Chocobo World and a magic booster that improves the game's spells. Unfortunately, the music suffers from the same problem that plagued this year's earlier re-release of Final Fantasy VII, with the quality being classic MIDI level. The music for VII was eventually patched, so the same could happen here, but it's a shame they didn't learn from that for this release. And that's the news today. Do you think esports competitors should be restricted from being seen playing rival titles? Let us know what you think in the comments. Then check out roosterteeth.com for the newest episode of our gaming podcast, The Patch, for some healthy PC versus console debate.